to anyone who has ever spoken to a company or a brand about their sustainability efforts, to anyone who's really pushed through those awkward moments when you're challenging someone to be more sustainable, those moments really matter. Hey there, my name is Jana, and thanks for checking out this video. Today I have some really exciting positive news for sustainability in board gaming. But to really understand uh, the meaning of it all, we have to go back to a video I did last year called Fact Checking Stonemeyer's Eco-Friendly Claims. So in that video, I was bringing up the fact that there were some things that Jamie Stegmeier, the owner of Stonemeyer Games, was claiming that his games were made with recycled wood and recycled plastic, and that his board games really weren't that bad for the environment. The long and short of it is none of that was really true. And so looking into it and talking to Panda Manufacturing, Stonemeyer's manufacturer, I discovered that they actually weren't making using plastic recycled, post-consumer recycled plastic for their board game components. Uh, but in talking to Jamie, I learned that his manufacturer was telling him that. Uh, when it all you know came out, it turned out that there was just misinformation and miscommunication. Uh, so the, the real moral of that video was when you're talking about sustainability, you have to be very, very clear, uh, really understanding what is going on in your board games and what is going on in manufacturing. So that video was a really difficult one for me to put out there because it was pretty negative and a lot of hard stuff to understand and really appreciate. But I'm glad I went ahead with posting that video because I think it really caused a lot of conversations to spark uh, in public, but also behind the scenes. In doing that research, I did discover that Panda Manufacturing had some desires to pursue sustainability, but at that time, they only had a couple offerings for people who wanted sustainable options. In the year since, uh, Panda has really stepped up their game for sustainability. The first thing that I noticed on their webpage, they have a whole new revamped page for their sustainability commitments. You should really check it out. I have the link in the description below. And they're clarifying what they actually are doing in their board games that are more sustainable. They also listed goals about what they'd like to do to be more sustainable in the future. When you look at these goals, uh, you may be tempted to roll your eyes and be like, yeah, yeah, that's gonna ever happen. But they actually have started doing these things. So one of the goals on their list was to become an FFC certified facility. And that has already happened. The sustainability uh, manager at Panda, and he did confirm for me that they are officially FFC certified. And that means that they are a part of the FFC supply chain now, and they can give a board game the FFC stamp of approval on their board games. And that's really important for consumers so that they can purchase games knowing that that game came from a responsibly sourced forest. Because they've actually gone ahead and started following through with their goals, I have a lot of high hopes. I'm going to read off the goals that Panda has set for themselves for 2022 and the future because I think they're really important. They will be super effective if they are achieved and they're a great example for other manufacturers. First one is to hire an outside consultant with sustainable manufacturing expertise to help guide um, their process. The second one is to achieve full FFC certification for their facility, which they already did. Third one is to increase their paper wrapping capacity through automation. So when a board game is wrapped in paper in lieu of plastic saran wrap or shrink wrap, uh, I believe at this point it's being done by hand, which is much more costly. Uh, so the fact that they want to pursue this ability through automation will make it much more accessible and affordable to publishers. The other one is to improve consolidation of components during assembly to reduce multiple single use plastic bags in new games. So this one sounds boring but it's actually one of the best goals because what they're really pursuing is efficiency, which is smart when it comes to sustainability. They're going to offer a wet press 
wet base insert tray as an alternative to the vacuum formed plastic insert trays. As you know from watching any of my previous videos about the subject, I hate the plastic insert trays that come in our board games. They are cheap and flimsy and they are not recyclable. So any alternative that would be plant-based, I am a fan of. They wanna use shredded recycled paper instead of bubble wrap for shipping. I'm really glad that this is on their goal list and I hope that they start doing that soon. They also wanna offer paper wrapping as an option alternative for card decks. And finally, they want to explore options for renewable power resources. So what do you think? I feel like Panda has really set the bar. They've laid out very specific goals that will be very effective towards their means of reducing the harmful impacts on the environment. So let's talk a little bit about Stonemaier Games and where they are in the sustainability front. So shortly after I released the video about fact-checking their eco-friendly claims, Jamie Stegmeier came out with a um, like a grading system for his games to really show where they're lacking in sustainability and um, where they actually are doing things. I thought that this was a great step uh, just to kind of keep everything in the forefront for people to see and he kind of kept re revisiting sustainability over the past year. Now, last month was a really big announcement and I'm gonna read it here, I have the quote. We are incredibly excited that our manufacturing partner, Panda, now offers all FFC certified materials if a publisher chooses them. So Stonemaier Games is now using all FFC certified materials in current and future print runs of our products. This is an amazing announcement. It's a pretty big deal, it's a big commitment and it is one of the best things a board game publisher can do to reduce the negative impacts on the environment. In addition to using FFC certified materials, Jamie also announced that wingspan components are now plastic free. And I'm so excited because I love Wingspan. It's such a beautiful, um, nature loving game. And it always bothered me that there was so much plastic in it. So I love the fact that they're going to be swapping the plastic little eggs that we all love out for wood eggs. It seems like a no brainer. In addition to that, they're not gonna be using that cheap plastic insert anymore. They're instead, he's going to be going with a sugar cane base pulp, which is biodegradable. It will actually decompose outdoors um, within 30 to 90 days. It is 100% recyclable as long as it's not mixed with any oily food uh, contaminants. And it is a renewable resource. It's a really great option for board game components and board game trays and organizers. He also says that all the plastic bags and wingspan are now going to be biodegradable. And these changes will be appearing in the fourth quarter of 2022 on their website at Stonemaier Games and in retail stores. He says that the exterior of the box will look identical to previous runs. It's just the inside components will be plastic free. This past week, Jamie made another announcement about two new games that are coming out. The first one is Between Two Cities Essential Edition. And instead of a plastic insert, they're using cardboard. They're gonna have a few biodegradable bags. I don't know what a few means, but hopefully it'll mean all of, the, <laughs> all of them. There'll be recycled cardboard components. Um, the recycled materials in the cardboard that Panda produces is only 30%, but it is better than nothing. Um, there will be wooden tokens and there will also be no shrink wrap. Instead, they're gonna be using a glossy cover for the box. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I appreciate that there that he's trying different options, but the glossy laminate on the boxes are essentially a plastic. In the big picture, they are essentially the same thing. So I think that wrapping board games and paper is ultimately the most eco-friendly thing to do. The other game that he's coming out is called Smitten. Smitten was designed from the ground up to be more eco-friendly. It's a micro 
game, only 18 cards and a single paper rule book. And we package the cards using a paper band. And that's everything. No shrimp wrap, no plastic at all. And I think that is something to be really proud of. And I think it's such a great um, ending to this tale where it started kind of dark with a lot of misunderstanding about sustainability. And in a year's time, two really amazing companies turned their sustainability effort, efforts around in a very meaningful way. And I want to just end on saying uh, to anyone who has ever spoken to a company or a brand about their sustainability efforts, to anyone who's really pushed through those awkward moments when you're challenging someone to be more sustainable, those moments really matter. And this is kind of a testimony to you Anytime that you bring up your desires or challenge someone to raise the bar for the planet, it can actually make a difference. So don't give up, keep talking about it, keep trying, and eventually we can make a change for the environment across the board. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys are all encouraged and I will see you in the next one. Bye.